Oh, yes. So can an audio amplifier chip drive a DC motor? Well, the short answer is yes, it can be done. This is a question that was spawned from the intersection of nostalgia and, quite frankly, laziness. The nostalgia was from a saying I heard a long time ago when people were discussing hi-fi audio equipment. They were describing the output response as being from DC to daylight, which was obviously an exaggeration, but the daylight referred to the very high frequency end, as you could imagine, and DC refers to the low end or zero hertz. And although this sounded impressive, the idea of driving a speaker with DC seemed quite foolish, since it had end in the destruction of the speaker, most probably. However, this thought remained in the back of my mind for many, many years, and then it recently resurfaced as a result of laziness. I wanted to build a drive circuit for a motor. Very simple one, but I really didn't want to go to the trouble of laying out a whole lot of transistors in a bridge configuration and all of that. So, rummaging through my junk box, I found an old TDA7052 chip, which is a speaker amplifier chip. I wondered to myself, could it be done? Could I drive a DC motor with an audio amplifier chip? Could its bandwidth actually extend all the way down to DC? Well, looking at the data sheet, it suggests that it wouldn't. It shows a frequency response of 20 hertz up, all the way up to 20 kilohertz. But I thought, why not try? And so I did. Now the TDA7052 chip is very basic. It has a bridged output and a single input. Through experimentation of varying the voltage on the input through a potentiometer, I discovered the, the range of voltages which provided a good bridged output, reversing the voltage applied to the motor and also the amplitude of that voltage. In this circuit diagram, I've arranged it so that the input is set to one of four voltages and that provides fast forward, slow forward, slow reverse and fast reverse. As you can see in the circuit diagram, I've added a few components around the motor. This is because this chip was designed to drive a loudspeaker, not a DC motor. Perhaps the biggest difference between the loudspeaker and the motor is that the loudspeaker coil is always connected to the amplifier output, whereas with the DC motor, especially this one here which has little brushes in it, it's constantly connecting and disconnecting the coils of the motor to the output of the amplifier. This sudden energizing and de-energizing of the rotor coil in the motor creates a rather large back EMF, which could be many times the actual voltage of the power supply. So I've placed some Schottky diodes around the motor in reverse polarity configuration. That ensures that the voltages on the motor pins don't go below about half a volt below ground or half a volt above 5 volts DC. Schottky diodes are very fast in their response. You could probably get away with just using regular power diodes like typical 1N4004, uh, but I had a few of these lying around so I thought I'd use them. I placed the 2.2 ohm resistor in series with the motor to do some current measurements. The measured motor current is 45 milliamps. The motor is well within the specification of the amplifier. The capacitor across the motor is also there to help suppress any large voltage excursions as a result of the back EMF. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and have a terrific day.